Hi, welcome to animationscope.com. My name is Ram and today in this tutorial we will learn how to render out a scene in 3D Studio Max using V-Ray as a renderer. So let's get started and open our scene. Okay, I have the scene. Uh, I have already modeled this scene. Actually some of the models I have downloaded from internet and rest of the geometry like walls and these simple objects I have modeled. Alright, so let's quickly uh, get started with the tutorial. Uh, go to render settings and be sure that you have assigned your render as V-Ray because we are going to render the scene in V-Ray. So let me define the rendering engine as V-Ray. I'm using V-Ray 1.5. My version is demo 1.5 SP2. Okay. Click OK. Now as soon as you define V-Ray as a renderer, you can see the tabs has been changed to V-Ray tabs. Okay, now if you go to click on this V-Ray tab, you have these options. In this, you have this V-Ray frame buffer, and you can see if you enable this frame buffer, actually this is the option by which you can override the function of Max, like uh, get resolution from Max. If you switch it off, you can have your own V-Ray output like 64480. Okay, so for now I'm just disabling it because I don't want it right now. Okay, and if I go to global switches, we have so many options like uh, override material. If you want a single material on your single scene, then you can switch on this material and this override button. And for now, I'm just clicking on this default lights button because because I don't want any default light in our scene. I want V-ray lights as our, uh, lighting scene, lighting object. Okay, so I'm switching off light by just clicking on it. And let's move down and we have this image sampler you can see we have this image sampler and bracket there is written anti-aliasing actually this controls the whole image quality of our scene see there are three methods to control this one is fixed adaptive DMC and adaptive subdivision I choose adaptive DMC because I like it because it's a very good method it's a very good method to control the overall image quality according to the situation for example, if you are having so many glossy objects and motion blurs, then you can use this method. I always choose this method as I like it very much. And we have this anti aliasing filter. You can see there are so many kinds of filters given. Actually, they do to control the anti aliasing quality of the image. But I'm choosing as Catmull ROM so because it provides very nice results. You can see the description also like a 25 pixel filter with pronounced edge enhancement effect. Okay, let's move down and we have this V-Ray environment rollout. You can see we have this GI environment a skylight override. You can switch it on because we have this environment over here. You can see the out environment from these windows. So I'm switching it on by just simply clicking on it and reflection and refraction because we have some objects in our scene which have reflection and refraction. So for that I'm just clicking on it to make them on. And we have this color mapping also. We'll talk about it later on. Uh, just leave it for now. And let's proceed towards indirect illumination. Now, indirect illumination, if I render out my scene by just hitting render production button, you can see we have only this thing and this thing. Uh, but there is no light in the scene because we have switched off the default lights and there is no light in the scene that's why our whole scene is black so first we need to place some lights in our scene okay let me quickly go to my on the viewport and front viewport see yeah we can see clearly the windows of our scene and we need to place some lights over here i'm going to lights lights V-Ray and V-Ray light and I am placing the light from my front viewport and just dragging it like this way and I am placing it according to my windows now if I go to my left viewport I can see actually the light is pointing outwards and we need to place it point it inwards so I am just rotating it be sure to have this angle snap tool on and I can rotate it like this way ok 180 degrees and now it's pointing to an inward okay and you can go to top view to place it properly move tool 
into line and just place it on the window like this uh, what I'm doing see I'm placing this light inside my room and be sure that this light is not going to be intersect any part of my geometry because if there is any overlapping with the geometry then we will get some blotchy and some noisy effect which we don't want see uh, let me increase the length of this light according to our window I guess so. okay and you can see the height as well of the light okay it's not bad you can decrease the width okay just need to place according to the window length and height all right so actually we have two windows in our scene so what i'm doing just hold on shift button and move it towards right to just copy the things i'm choosing instance option click ok um, ok so we have placed the light and let's have a quick render of our scene ok as you can see there is so much high intense light is there and some noise there is so much noise actually ok and you can see the render is overall is very bad so there is no need to worry we, we need to change the settings according to our scene so I'm going to my render settings box and one thing you can see that we have light over here on this part this part when we don't have any kind of light on this part because there is no any kind of bounce effect is there because in real world light actually travels here and it bounces like there 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 and it will make the whole room but for but in our scene there is no bounce light is there so we need to switch on the indirect illumination switch on this gi in V-Ray, it's indirect illumination. You can see in bracket there is GI option is also there. So switch on the GI effect, and we have two options for controlling the GI. One is primary bounces, and the second one is secondary bounces. And we have these methods to control the GI. So I'm choosing Iridance Map as my primary bounces, and my secondary bounces I'm taking light cache. Okay, and one more thing, if you see we have so much intense light is there so we need to reduce the light intensity as well just select any light and as we have instance of our light so I just need to change the multiplier of this light and it will automatically change the intensity of this light because we have in, in, in instance of these lights okay so let's have a render again of our scene okay one more thing uh, just go to render settings and in direct illumination in V-Ray iridance map settings change the current preset to low because we are just making some test render so we we don't need to make it very high so I'm just taking the current preset as low and these subdivisions actually it also increase the render time and our quality so I for just test rendering I'm just taking it as 30 and now hit render and you can see now it's building light cache okay now you can see we have indirect light in our scene but the only problem is we have so much intense light coming from this window so we need to reduce the light intensity again so go to view light and reduce the intensity to around 5 okay and go to this V-ray rollout and at the end there is one V-ray color mapping I'm just changing this type to exponential okay and hit render again to see the change okay this time you can see the render is much much better than the previous render so the if if you look, look carefully in the scene you still have some problems like these lights are looking very very flat and there is still some noise so we need to control it so we need to change our settings and in that illumination tab you can increase the this HSPH subdivisions for better quality what I'm doing I'm going to in the sample lookup of this iridance map settings and I'm making it overlapping very good fast okay and 
I am increasing the subdivisions to around 40 for now. You can go to click on this light cache because we are using light cache our as our secondary bounces. Go in VRail light cache and show click on show calculation phase. You can increase these subdivisions also like to around 1200. Okay. And all right, go to VRA again. And one more thing to this light actually, these, there are two lights. And if I go to my VRA light settings, we have in this modifier tab of our light, we have this invisible option so that we can see the outside environment. Okay, and now hit render to see what and you can see as we have switched on the show calculation phase, we are seeing what kind of calculation is going on. All right. Okay, now we have much better results. Okay, now you can see there is some problem over here. We have some noise. So what I'm doing, I just need to move my light slight backwards okay be sure that the lights are not intersecting the geometry okay and one more thing the light is coming from outside so we need to place a direct light source also so for this what you can do you can go to your lights and I'm taking a standard light and I'm using target directional light as a direct light in our scene so that kind of sunlight is coming from these windows like this on on our bad okay go to modifier tab of this directional light and as you can see the fall off and the light beam is very very thin so we need to increase it go to directional parameters and you can increase the hot spot beam like this increase it according to the room geometry you can increase the fall off field if you want smooth feathered uh, light edges okay and change it to the shape to rectangle and we need to switch on the shadows also and I am switching on the V-ray shadows okay now hit render to see the changes okay now you can see our render is much much better than the previous renders okay the only problem we have this environment and we need to place a uh, environment like trees or any kind of environment outside environment to a scene and we can do it in our post production in photoshop so there is no need to worry about this thing the only thing which i am doing actually i am thinking that the intensity in our room is not so much so what i'm doing is taking this video light i'm going to do the multiplier i'm increasing the multiplier to around six and let's have a region render this time so that we can see what's happening we can increase the region hit render again select hit render again okay so I think it's fine for now okay so I think the render is good enough so what I'm doing let's do some final settings for our final image rendering go to V-Ray and let's go to this uh, V-Ray DMZ image sampler and increase the minimum subdivisions to around 2 go to indirect illumination and change the current preset to high and also increase the subdivisions to around 50 rest of the things are okay you can increase the sample size to let's say point zero zero six all right and everything is fine let's change the render size also to around thousand by 750 and hit 
render okay so we have this render and let me save this image <laughs> tutorial in the fields and I'm saving it in PNG or you can save it on Targa format I'm saving it in PNG format save okay okay now let's jump into Photoshop to do some post processing okay now you can see this window area is transparent because on our CD Studio Max we had environment on this much area okay so we can easily place an image as our environment so if I go to my drives and I have these outdoor images which you can use in our scene so I'm taking this image okay, as our environment move tool and I'm moving it down like this okay now you can see we have our environment the only problem is it's, it's very green and our room is very very yellow and in real world we have some kind of bounce from the environment also so what we can do I can color correct this image the rendered image so something do something green by going to color balance I can increase a little bit amount of green color you know seen like this okay and our room is very intense if I see outside area see there here there's so much intensity of light so what we can do I can increase the intensity of the environment also by just going to levels and increase the mid-tones like this okay and we have some problem on this area as I'm seeing it right now see we have some problems here because the light is falling here like this and this area should be much in intense according to this light so what we can do we we'll select this layer go to polygon lasso tool and I'm making a selection of this area like this go down Up. okay and what you can do right click layer via copy and we have this area in separate layer so what you can do is go to image adjustments we can increase the exposure or we can do it by levels also I'm taking an exposure and you can increase the exposure like this. okay and let's see what happens yeah now it's looking much better okay so we have this room you can also use ambient occlusion pass if you want more depth in your scene here on this part you can render ambient occlusion pass also and let's see some other adjustments what I'm doing I'm taking an adjustment layer on the top like say levels or I can take curves adjustment layer as curves increase the whole okay so looking good okay so we have this scene hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial very much we will meet in the next tutorial for till then goodbye take care